On November 8, 2016, the people will elect to office the 45th President of the United States of America. Although this election cycle has been fraught with tumult, controversy, and unexpected twists at every turn, perhaps we can lend some clarity to the chaos by the numbers. In this video, we will use a logistic regression model to determine if a given state will vote Democrat or Republican, with success defined as a vote for the incumbent political party. The model will be built on historical electoral college results from the previous 30 election cycles, a dataset containing over 1,200 observations of 24 potential independent variables going back over 120 years. From the raw data, there are three areas of potential concern the subset of variables with the highest predictive power, whether or not a subset of the data would be most accurate given changes in voter behavior over time, and the cutoff value at which the regression output most accurately separates successes from failures. To account for these, we constructed a model and ran it through a series of tests, looking for maximum accuracy with a balance between high precision and high recall. In each iteration of the test, a stepwise algorithm was used to select the best subset of independent variables as we adjusted the cutoff value and the historical reach of the input data. The optimum balance appears to occur with 15 election cycles and a cutoff of 0.65, yielding accuracy of approximately 83% with precision and recall of approximately 84%. It is interesting to note that the optimal cutoff seems to shift upwards as the data is limited to more recent elections, possibly indicating a general trend away from voting to re-elect whichever political party holds the presidential office at any given point in time. The model selected by stepwise regression consists of 11 independent variables. Of these, incumbency has the greatest impact, drastically increasing the likelihood of re-election. However, since President Obama is not eligible for a third term, we can recalculate the model, removing incumbency-related variables at a slight cost to historical predictive accuracy. We should also remove variables prone to cause overfitting. This yields a final model with four independent variables, accuracy and precision of approximately 78%, and recall of approximately 87%. The final model reveals that voter behavior in the immediate previous election cycle is the best predictor of behavior in the current election cycle, with states that voted for the party currently in office eight times more likely to vote for the incumbent party than states that did not. Continuously voting against the political party currently in office also has a significant impact, with states that voted against said party in the previous three or more election cycles five times less likely to vote for the incumbent party. This is significantly more impactful than states that voted consistently with the party currently in office, which are only 17% more likely to vote for incumbent parties again. Although states that voted for political parties currently in office only once or twice in the past five election cycles are only slightly more likely than not to vote for them again in the current election, they become exponentially more likely to vote for said parties the more consistently they have voted historically. Although this model is informative, those familiar with U.S. politics will know that not all states follow the same voting trends. A handful of so-called swing states often exert undue influence over election results. Analytically, there are several methods to identify swing states. One such method is to identify states whose voting trends fall more than some number of standard deviations away from the national average. These diagrams show the frequency with which each state gave electoral votes to their historically most oft voted for party's candidates over time. Looking at the 15 election cycle period defined previously, we see that there are 10 states below the negative one standard deviation cutoff. Alternately, we could define swing states as those states who voted for their historical majority party with less than a predefined frequency. In this case, 
There are 30 such states who voted for their historical majority party's candidates less than 80% of the time. Using the steps previously discussed, we can generate two additional regression models specific to these subsets of swing states. In both cases, the immediately previous election cycle is the most, if not the only, statistically significant predictor variable of voting behavior. The full model predicts that 27 states will vote for Hillary Clinton and 24 will vote for Donald Trump, yielding a sweeping victory for Clinton at 332 against 206. The standard deviation cutoff swing state model assumes 13 states will vote for Clinton and 28 will vote for Trump, and predicts an additional 8 states will vote for Clinton and an additional 2 will vote for Trump, yielding a not-so-sweeping Trump victory at 285 against 253. The 80% consistency cutoff swing state model assumes 5 states will vote for Clinton and 16 for Trump, and predicts an additional 21 states will vote for Clinton and an additional 9 for Trump, yielding another Clinton victory at 319 against 219.